Welcome on in everyone. This is the astrology forecast uh, pertaining to the new moon in Taurus coming up for us on May 19th. And um, I'm going to open this up by talking uh, more about the general energies. As we get deeper into it, we'll talk about, you know, transits that are going on at this time, aspects being made to this moon. And if you hang to the very end, I'll give you a sneak peek into what's coming up ahead with the next lunar energy with the full moon in Sagittarius on June 3rd. All right, so I'm actually looking forward to this, <laughs> you know, post-eclipse season. Um, this is going to be a lovely energy for us grounding some things out. I mean, look, it was probably, at least for the fixed signs, you know, um, Aquarius, Taurus, Scorpio, definitely Scorpio, and Leo, not the most grounded energy that we are, you know, coming out of with eclipse season. We were very impacted by that uh, lunar eclipse in Scorpio on the 5th. So this is nice, you know, coming into this where I think it's going to help us to ground some things out, set some goals, and really look at what can I do to manifest more pleasure in my life and who doesn't need that? Now, I think before we can even look at grounded manifestation, uh, we have to really kind of take an analysis of what remains given, you know, what came in and what left during eclipse season. What remains from the fallout? Um, what reality checks occurred really signaling what needs to change in your life and looking at what's in your control, what's not in your control, which I'm covering in a lot of the, the tarot readings, by the way, that are coming out um, for this new moon in Taurus. Because I think a lot of us, from what I could see from those readings, a lot of us are dealing with trying to fix things that are out of our control or worried about things that are out of our control. And I think that, you know, if we can get really clear about what is in our control and impacting or in fact affecting change, with what we do have control over, we're just going to be the most effective. Another consideration post that lunar eclipse in Scorpio is having to look at the shadow side of ourselves and others, looking at the duality of every choice we make. There's always pros and cons to everything. There's always a cost versus risk analysis or benefits analysis, okay? And so I think that whatever happened around the 5th, it's showing us, okay, look, you know, look at all sides of these things uh, and really address maybe our own inner demons that we're battling. I don't know about you, but me, I mean, I saw a lot of stuff going on with people. And around the time of that lunar eclipse on the 5th, I actually had a moment where I was taken aback, just kind of like really kind of going through a mental inventory of all the people I know and all the issues that they're going through right now. And I was just like, <laughs> like I, I know we know that everybody's wrestling with their own inner demons, but I feel like something about that time frame really brought it out. And it just was kind of like, whoa, to see what people are dealing with in their own little private battles. I think there's been a lot of increased awareness about that. And I think in some way that awareness is factoring into, okay, um, realistically, how do we manifest what we want given the reality, the reality that is sober at times, disappointing, challenging, you know what I mean? And how do we build ourselves up from that? With the Taurus energy, it's about us assessing, you know, what is required um, and, and, and probably what's required is diligence patience uh, and that might not feel good or comfortable um, and I think that given the Cancerian energies and the Taurus energies that we've been in and that we're going through um, you know people are very much like you know this is not feeling comfortable to me um, this is not the way I wanted this to go down I mean could there not be an easier way but again the energies are you know having us look at how what maybe we want to do um, is not really what we need to do. And it's that contrast between the feelings in Scorpio. This is what feels comfortable. This is what I want. This is what I trust um, versus what you've got to do with that North Node in Taurus and uh, Uranus and Taurus as well. It's just like, well, 
Sog it up, buttercup, this is what's required. So I think the eclipses have been forcing us to release um, feelings that are maybe um, in conflict with prioritization, proper prioritization of what needs to happen. Not comfortable at all. And I think going into this new moon in Taurus, there is going to be a continued theme of trauma and dealing with it that is carrying over from that lunar eclipse in Scorpio on the 5th. So we have to continue working on transforming the, the pain into power over the next few months. It's not going to leave quickly or easily, okay? Um, some of you may, you know, if you're into crystals and, you know, gemstones and things like that, you may want to look at um, Black Obsidian. That's what actually came to mind as I was preparing these notes. So um, and I have had some Black Obsidian. And of course, there are different crystals that have protective qualities. But for me, the Black Obsidian has been like, whoa. <laughs> I, I have some Black Obsidian stories. But I'll leave it for another time. I'm just going to say that's potent. Okay, so... Maybe go, you know, get 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 a bracelet kind of like this. That's black obsidian, and I had one, but it it came apart. I've got to rethread it. Um, but wear that during this time if you feel like you're needing to um, protect yourself from negative energies. Okay, um, and also I think that over the time of this new moon in Taurus into the next few months. We have to be aware of not getting stuck in or ensnared by trauma. And those protective crystals could probably help with that. So I heard one person uh, say, and I thought this was so spot on, you know, that we have to consciously choose post-traumatic growth, PTG, as opposed to post-traumatic stress disorder. Okay, we all know about that, PTSD. But we've got to like consciously choose PTG, post-traumatic growth. How can I let this trauma grow me spiritually, emotionally, relationally, so forth? But I think that has to come from a place of being committed to your own healing in the first place. And you have to be committed in a very tangible, substantial sense. And again, this new moon is going to give the opportunity to do that. I'm going to talk more about that in a moment. Um, just things that we can do in the physical realm to help with our healing. But again, it goes back to you. What are you willing to do to get the healing in your life? So with any new moon, it's a time of setting powerful intentions. And for this new moon, I think the intentions are probably most effective if you're setting them on matters concerning stability and security, specifically intentions that are in alignment with your values. And you really got to look at right now, what relationships are you in that are in alignment with your values? Another consideration is what can you do to go after more pleasure in your life? You know, when I was reading for the signs, um, there was a card that kept coming up about, um, for various signs, about connecting more with your inner child, lightening up, having more fun, being more present in the current moment. Um, so in some way, that may be relevant to you um, to try to keep it more simple, um, right? It's not necessarily that you're going to go on some grand tour of the Cayman Islands <laughs> to get your pleasure and joy, right? It's something more simple on the day-to-day -day in a more of an innocent, childlike way. But what plans do you need to set right now to bring that to pass? What seeds do you need to sow right now to bring that to pass? in order to bring the desired harvest or manifestation in your life in due time with due diligence. Because when we're talking about Taurus energy, this is not about, right? <laughs> it's not. There are no quick fixes in this energy. Um, you're going to probably have to look at long-term investment, long-term payoff with whatever it is that you're investing yourself into, whether we're talking investment of money, resources, emotions, attention, whatever. You take it however it applies. 
but just a reminder that part of the reason why nothing is really going to be pop, pop, popping with these new investments, um, and you got to look for the long term, is because you know we are now looking at the remainder of this year full of retrogrades. So things are just not going to be popping. Okay, maybe maybe coming into the new year, we'll start seeing a lot of that backing off. Okay, but the goals that you're setting right now have to bear that in mind that if you're just looking for overnight success, um, you're probably going to be disappointed. Um, the goals have to be very down to earth, very realistic in order for you to get achievement by realistically um, maybe the start of the next new year, okay? And in the meantime, you're going to have to do your due diligence. You're going to have to be patient. But on the positive, um, the remainder of this year is a time where you could be positioning yourself quite nicely so that by the time all these retrogrades start really lifting and giving us a lot more forward movement, we're sitting pretty to hit the ground running. And we've made the investment. We've put in the work, okay? Something that's really helped me with being patient and, you know, because maybe you're in a situation like myself where I'm like, man, I really need stuff to hit. I need stuff to pop off now. Like, I don't forget January. I don't have till January to figure this out. You, you have to get to a place where you can accept that reality is never going to be perfect. And I say that to myself the most because I, with all my, you know, with my Pisces stellium um, and my North Node in Sagittarius conjunct Neptune, I mean, I this has been my gift curse in life, you know, the idealistic thinking, right? And I've got a lot of Aquarius placements as well, which are very pie in the sky, idealistic, <laughs> wishful thinking, you know, shoot for the stars type stuff. Um but if we can maybe see our ideals as guiding stars, not so much distant shores as the saying goes, um, then maybe it's easier. You know, when you, you know you know you're maybe not gonna hit, that's just giving you a point of direction. Okay, like I'm going in that direction. I'm gonna see how close I can get to that. I don't expect myself to hit maybe right on target. If I do, great. But if I don't, it's fine. It's just guiding me roundabout in the direction I need to go. That's kind of the mentality I think that helps when we don't live up to our ideals or reality is not living up to our ideals. And I think that helps uh, because, again, if you're a person like myself who deals with a, a lot of idealism, I'm, I'm just programmed that way, okay? Um, and reality never, never lives up to it. By the time you're my age, you could absolutely feel like, why is life always a struggle? I've absolutely felt that. And I think the last year and a half with the energies of, you know, the um, South Node in Scorpio, okay, has been really fleshing out any unrealistic expectations. It's been forcing us to face sober realities. It's been exposing people who want maybe the benefits of a relationship without the cost or the sacrifice. It's forced us to confront the idealization of what relationships should be versus what they actually are. And that's come with a lot of sober, harsh, painful truths of the way it is. And that's forcing us, I think, on the positive to release the misalignments um, in terms of values and goals and all of that. So I will say again with this uh, new moon in Taurus, similar to the lunar eclipse uh, in Scorpio that we had, it's two back-to-back -back lunar energies mostly impacting the fixed signs, Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, Aquarius, um, mutable signs impacted as well. Cardinal signs probably the least impacted by it. But again, you got to look at your chart as a whole to really understand how deep the impact is and where. 
All right, so let's talk about some of the aspects that are being made to uh, this new moon. We will have Uranus conjunct within about nine degrees. And I think it's pushing us collectively to remain open to the need for continued change, continued adjustment towards increasing authenticity and getting away from this type of people pleasing where we compromise the truth of who we are in order to meet the expectations of others. Again, the way that this is actually the forcing the alignment towards authenticity is coming, you know, it's not the most pleasant, right? But um, these changes are really important um, in order for us to live to our highest potential. And um, yes, there are people who are fighting us and doing this. They're not supporting us in doing this because it's making them confront some things within themselves that they're not ready to. Maybe issues about how they're not being authentic. And so there's an issue again yet and still with realism and practicality is necessary in making these changes but sometimes oh gee you know what you what is authentic for you is maybe society is screaming at you and saying you know get real that's that's not going to pay your bills or uh, what are you thinking we're not we're not along for that ride okay so very painful and forcing um proper alignments in relationships and circumstances. So, yeah, the last two years, you may have had to let go of, um, you know, who you think you are or who you think you're supposed to be or how you think you're going to get there or, um, you know, letting go of feeling the obligated to live up to other people's expectations, live life on their terms and you know, be who they want and expect you to be um, in order for you to instead embrace who you are authentically, which who you are authentically might be highly inconvenient to other people, even yourself, okay? Because I'm just gonna say, this is my two cents on it, I don't really think this matrix supports people uh, doing their God-given purpose. I don't think this matrix, I think actually this matrix actively works to keep you off point with your life, to keep you off purpose with your life. And the moment you start really trying to come into alignment, there's no support for that because the support in this system is built around you being a cog in the machine and doing what you're told and not questioning and following the orders and take a number and stay in your lane. You know what I'm saying? This breaking away has perhaps been quite a humbling experience where you feel the aloneness uh, the lack of support in, in doing this. Maybe you got judgment from people. Maybe you got rejection. Maybe you got pushback. And I'm going to say, off notes, just intuitively, it's coming to me right now, is this projection? Are people showing you rejection? Because really within themselves, they reject a life lived authentically. I think also, you know, regardless of why it, it happened or where it's coming from, uh, from other people, you know, just those of us who have been brave enough to really hold firm to doing our calling in life, whether people get it or don't get it, support it or don't support it, um, it, it has been hard for us to maybe, you know, not fit in with the cool kids, okay? <laughs> Um, I mean, I'm an Aquarian, so it's like the story of my life, you know, I mean, I knew everybody. I, I was, you know, a social butterfly in high school, but I was, you know, never a part of the cool kids club. I was maybe too cool for the, for clicks. I would go in and out of all, I knew all the clicks, all the people, but I, 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 I belong to none of them, <laughs> you know? So, yeah, but they see the downside is in this matrix, if you don't belong to the cool kids club, well, you don't get membership benefits. Again, painful, harsh, sober truths, reality checks, and maybe coming to a point of realizing that authenticity comes with a price, especially here in this 3D realm, okay? And it's a price that unfortunately many people are unwilling to pay. That is a sad fact. And we know that. We know that from 2020 when, you know, people, a lot of people did what they were told. And now it's coming out that what they did and what they were told to do cost a lot of people their lives. 
and it meant compromising ethics. It meant ignoring their intuition in order for them to maintain status and acceptance among their peers. And that's super, super difficult. I'll talk more about that in a moment as we get into transits and whatnot. But let me say on the positive, this moon in Taurus harmonizes well with Mars, Neptune, and Pluto. So basically, there's a lot of positive possibilities here in terms of reimagining or just imagining um, and putting effort into some new ambitions, okay, and some new possibilities that, again, grounded, realistic, in alignment with your value system, okay? But just be careful about actions at this time that are fear-based, even on a subconscious level, making decisions that you don't really understand within yourself or others that, that fear is an undercurrent. But, you know, like, well, what's going to happen if I do this? Let me choose this over here because I'm afraid that that's not secure, that's not stable, I can't trust in that, that type of thing. Um, and in extreme cases, you may see paranoia rising up within yourself and others. And I would probably say that's mostly likely uh, within people who are, you know, incredibly um, insecure, okay, very afraid of loss, very afraid of um, what other people think. And um, I think as time goes on, we're, we're coming to realize that actually an incredibly number, large number of people are uh, very status conscious and very insecure about losing status. So something to consider with this energy is, yes, what is anchoring you? What is giving you stability and security right now? What is strengthening you? What can you trust? And that's going to really guide you in terms of how to prioritize your life. This is also going to be a really good time to go out in nature. I've been doing that a lot more. <laughs> um, do some grounding work out there. I mean, just sit down. Sit down on the ground. Um, do some centering, grounding techniques out there. And um, some of you, you know, go get a massage or give one and get one. Oh, yes. Um, body work is, is a good thing for now um, with this energy. And also eating foods that help you to ground yourself and to heal. The kind of foods that would help you to do that would be things like root vegetables that we usually actually eat during the fall. Um, but, you know, um, regardless of that, you could do some home-cooked meals, some comfort food, maybe like in a slow cooker with some soups would be really good. Um, adding more orange and red, um, naturally colored, <laughs> you know, um, food to your diet, like carrots, beets, red peppers, you know, things like that that will help you with your root and sacral chakra. Also fermented foods that help with your gut health, like coconut yogurt, sauerkraut, pickles, um, that is going to help warming spices like just, you know, sometimes at night I like to have a, a decaf latte, a chai latte, okay? Um, or I I used to sometimes go drive through Panera and get a decaf latte over there, okay? So it's those have warming spices in them that, you know, like cinnamon, turmeric, things like that that help you. Um, with your gut, but they, they're very warming foods, very healing foods. Also, make sure that you're getting good mineralization with, um, you know, the way that you season your food with like pink Himalayan salt or Celtic, Celtic salt, however you want to pronounce it. Um, things like that are going to help you. Um, I've been, by the way, buying, buying a lot of electrolyte water, so that helps with the mineralization as well. Just some plain, unflavored electrolyte water that's got a positive, um, a, a good alkaline uh, pH level. Um, that, that kind of stuff is going to help you heal during this time. Um, but aside from food and eating and all of that, um, it's a good energy at this time to challenge yourself to enjoy more simple pleasures in life. You know, like um, don't inhale the food, savor it, right? Um, and the same with sex, okay? I mean, if you have somebody to really connect with, um, you know, enjoy it. I mean, really enjoy it. Like indulge, if you may. In, in sacred sexuality, okay? Um, or if you know, if, 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 if that's not it for you, um, sleep in, you know? Um, have a lazy day, have a la lazy weekend. You know, when I was 
by the way, making notes for this, I, that song from Morrissey came to me. And I know a lot of people are not a fan of Morrissey, but my God, he's probably the most honest, sincere lyricist ever. <laughs> but um, I'm going to put a link for the video down below. Um, he put out a song most recently um, called I Spent the Day in Bed. Okay. And I think I'll copy paste the lyrics down there as well. And so it's just this air of um, being unrushed. Okay. And just like enjoying a simple pace of life, a less adorned life in terms of, you know, this stuff that's been going on with all the Aries energy and then coming into the eclipses and all of that, this disruptive, like just take a sigh of relief and try to enjoy something. Maybe again, simple, right? We don't, we don't need to take a cruise to the Cayman Islands. Just go to a park, go walk out in nature, maybe um, grab a picnic. You know, I go to my local HEB, right? I'm in Texas. Y'all don't know if you're not from Texas, you don't know HEB. So sad. But, you know, like the grocery store, you just walk in there in the front and they have a lot of to-go stuff, ready-made sandwiches, salads, you know, gourmet type stuff. And you just grab it and go sit at the park and enjoy, enjoy. Even if it's a picnic for one, you could absolutely do it. Um, whatever, you know, floats your boat, cloud watching, bird watching, I don't know, but it helps you to reset your energy after all of this bouncy bounce that's been going on with the energy, right? And I think also doing that is going to help us tune into what is giving to us, giving us a sense of comfort and enabling us to give others a sense of comfort, um, security, pleasure, worthiness, enoughness. Yeah, it gives us time and space to think on those things during Taurus season and also maybe get clear on the goal setting again, because with that new moon and, you know, setting intentions and all of that, really the intentions, I think, have a lot to do with goal setting. I think that particularly coming into the latter part of May, as the moon reaches a crescent moon in Leo on the 27th, um, we're probably going to feel more driven to take action on these goals right in the latter part of the month. But around this actual new moon, on the 19th, focus on the goal setting. And then by the end of May, I think you'll feel more um, driven to leave any kind of comfort zones that you've been in and do what you gotta do. All right, so let's talk about the transits that are going on uh, around the time of this new moon in Taurus. We will have Venus, which is the ruler of Taurus in Cancer, May 8th through June 5th. So. I think that energy is pushing us further to, you know, find our roots hard as it is with Uranus and Taurus during this time. Try to root down um, and find some comfort and be able to give and receive nurturance. And I'm going to just, you know, moment of honest transparency here. You know, this lunar eclipse with Scorpio really had me... <laughs> about this, right, that I really want to root down, I really want to anchor down. Um, but again, collectively, it's hard for all of us because of Uranus and Taurus with these nodes as they have been for the last year and a half. And then particularly if you're like me, where you got a Taurus rising or, you know, very prominent Taurus placements, it's very hard for us to anchor and root down. And it is yet at the same time so important to us and to not be able to do it or to be challenged like we have been in in finding our roots or anchoring down into something it's super hard it is like oh my god it's gonna make a taurus cry river right so you know venus is there i think trying to help us in that endeavor um particularly with matters concerning home family sense of belonging um you may find around the time of this full, uh, new moon that, that that those matters are very close to your heart. And you could be re reconsidering your relationship with money, possessions, um, and how these things uh, trigger insecurity. Um, are you defined by your job? Are you? Do you feel that you are defined by where you live and where you work? And... Um, fill in the blank material, okay? And if you don't have things a certain way, uh, have you lost a sense of yourself? Do you then feel 
insecure within yourself and your relationships. Um, what does this trigger when things are not as you need or want them to be with your stability and security? Um, it, this is really key with the North Node and Uranus and Taurus over the last two years for everybody, but specifically, like I said, if you've got some important Taurus placements, as do I. I mean, I've been getting my ass handed to me. I, I don't, don't look like it on here, but, <laughs> you know, we can, for maybe one hour for filming, we can make it look nice, right? Right, right. We got to pay attention to right, the Instagram world with filters and whatnot. Don't believe everything that you see online, okay? I'm a human. I have real struggles. <laughs> but if you don't see it, then yay me. Okay, so during this time, Pluto remains in retrograde. So there's a lot of internal pressure, I think, within a lot of us for change. Things going on within pressures, internal pressures to change some things in our lives. Um, and so just be aware of that. Um, it's not just you. It's other people are going through this internal push to make changes in their life. And coming into this new moon on the 14th of May, we have Mercury going into Taurus direct, going direct in Taurus, I should say. So I think that it's pushing a lot of us to, yeah, we're thinking about stability, security stuff. We're thinking about goals coming into this new moon, but also with the communications and again, uh, communicating what you value versus what other people value, um, we're having to really um, try to remain humble. Otherwise, people might get served some humble pie, right? <laughs> um, May 17th, the Jupiter squaring Pluto. And I think this is another reason why I'm saying try to stay humble because the energy on the 17th of May coming into this lunar energy is like, bringing a lot of challenge in terms of what you believe versus what other people believe. And I think we have to be careful of not forcing our beliefs onto others. Otherwise, you could see divisions deepening between people over a difference of beliefs. And these kind of conflicts could culminate into somebody maybe getting a bad reputation, all right? Um, I've somewhat been already seeing this personally where um, I, I entered into a contract and I agreed to a certain thing and then all of a sudden they hit me with another expense um, that I didn't agree to and I tried to call and say I did not agree to that and I tried to make an offer and they refused my offer and then I said well can I speak to somebody above you and the two people that I tried to um, you know, get them to tell me who's above you. Uh, they refused. They don't want their boss to know. <laughs> so I had to, I'm, I'm probably going to have to go online and I'm going to fill out a, uh, yeah, I'm going to probably be a Karen. <laughs> Let's just say it. Because I try, I try to, I try to handle it privately, right? And I try to handle it diplomatically and I try to make an offer. Um, but they had a my way or the highway type of attitude. And so, I'm just telling you again, in the workplace situations where, you know, you have forums where people can go like on Yelp or Open Door, is it Open Door or, you know, these places where you can do reviews of people, um, be careful because if you can't get on the same page, maybe about money issues, contracts, values, whatever, um, somebody could go report on you all right i'm just i'm not trying to like you know scare you but it's like well you know i tried to talk to somebody above you but you you don't want any accountability you don't want a transparency so now everybody's going to see it on yelp okay just saying that's an example of how this maybe could manifest because i'm seeing it in my own life already um just be careful i'm going to say generally with this energy um some of us may have big ideas that are having to be brought down to earth um, because maybe we've been expecting too much too soon. And again, going back to, you know, this energy of, you know, Taurus doing your due diligence and, and getting a harvest in due time, having to be patient, having to be diligent, especially given all the retrogrades for the remainder of this year. Um, really don't expect too much too soon, okay? That could get people into big trouble, especially if you are trying to propose a really great idea, but again, your timeline is not realistic and you gotta bring it down to earth. Also, 
prepare for increased competition. Um, that's just going to happen with this energy. Um, I'm going to say uh, more on a global scale and getting into kind of what's going on out in the world. Um, it, 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 some weird stuff is going on, okay? We are overall seeing a decline in population if you look at just the strict numbers, yet there's mass migration in some areas making it appear as though the population is growing, like the population decline is not happening because people are being moved around as the people are dying off, they're being, de um, they're being replaced by migrant populations. So there's a lot of smoke and mirrors going on and also, this is coming in the form of manufactured scarcity through the inflation. So, um, you know, like there's there there's a lot of you know going back to the general energy of Jupiter squaring Pluto, um, people's worldviews, their perspectives are changing, and so just be aware of difficulties during this time around the 17th with all things Sagittarius, Scorpio related, which would be, you know, long distance travel, publishing, legalities, um, higher education, religion, beliefs. You could see probably see a lot of people clashing over their beliefs um, globally, okay? And, and also, you know, truth seeking. Um, some people, are not interested in the truth. I know it's kind of shocking, but a lot of people hate the truth because it's offensive and the truth doesn't care. <laughs> okay. Um, but there's also, you know, with this, when we're talking about the Scorpio energy, we're also talking about matters having to do with other people's money, debt, taxes, settlements, trust issues, secrets, right? So you get a lot of clashing over that, people trying to get expansion, being challenged because there's a lot of intense change going on with the monetary system, with cultures, with the population, and things are not what they seem. So, um, yeah, and even right now, yeah, a lot of people have distrust with the current systems and structures in society, and rightly so. And, you know, if you're plugged into sources of truth, um, where it's not censored, like on this platform, um, you know, if you're over on places like Twitter, uh, TikTok, Rumble, um, you you can see very clearly that a lot of chaos has um, erupted, and that has overshadowed a lot of people's um, sense of direction. A lot of people are feeling lost and angry about it at this time. If you're not keeping up with these platforms that I'm talking about, Rumble, Twitter, TikTok, and you know specifically the news, what's going on in, on a global scale, you're living in a bubble. You're living in an artificial construct. You maybe don't know what's hit you and why and what to do about it. I'm sorry to say, okay, um, I don't want to get off on that because so many of you following me here, you, you know my spiel about it, okay, you know. But I'm going to tell you the people I think that feel most lost right now and confused are those who believed in and trusted in the systems, the governmental systems, particularly over the last two years. They're probably finding that their um, personal needs for growth, right, Jupiter, are at odds with the needs of uh, the needs for security and stability, right? Because with the square Pluto, that's just getting flushed down the dang toilet, okay? Um, there's a lot of discontent, dissatisfaction with life that um, people are experiencing, and I think quite pronounced around the 17th of May with this square. And so again, I think the advice is you've got to refocus on um, your goals. You have also uh, got to try to make it a point to enjoy some simple, simple pleasures in life. Um, you, you're probably like me, and you can't afford to go take that cruise to the Cayman Islands. Hey, if someone wants to sponsor me, I'm down with it. <laughs> but back to reality land. Um, yeah, instead, I'm probably going to, you know, go do a picnic down at the park, you know, and I'm going to enjoy that um, as a way of coping with things that are out of my control that I cannot resolve, okay? Um, maybe meditate on... Um, what is going 
to suffice for you, what is good enough, right? I remember many years ago, I uh, met somebody who will always have a very special place in my heart. Uh, but he said to me, he said, you know, I feel like you're never happy. I could never make you happy. And, and it really got me thinking. And as years went on, I came to, I would reflect back on that. And I came to understand, oh, well, you know, there's a difference between us, you know. Um, I'm not really trying to live a happy life. <laughs> He is. <laughs> I'm trying to live a life of meaning, okay? Meaning and purpose, which is not always happy, happy, okay? I'm, I've got kind of more of a melancholy uh, temperament where he has more of a sanguine, he's, you know, cheery, happy, whatever. And mine is melancholy where I, I'm more philosophical in nature. I look at the serious side of life, you know, um, maybe the darker subjects, okay? And because my value system is not about being happy. I know a lot of people it is. Happiness at any cost, blissfully happy, all right? Blissfully unaware. Ignorance is bliss, right? That would not be me. <laughs> but um, just reflecting back on what he said and, and just this energy is like, maybe meditate on what, what is good enough. Is it ever good enough? And if not, why, you know? But yeah, going back to the, you know, happiness versus having meaning in life, um, it, it takes me to a scripture in Ecclesiastes, um, probably my favorite book in the Bible, actually, um, where um, it talks about how wisdom preserves life, but it also adds sorrow. So some people, like I said, that's why they want to be blissfully ignorant. And it's kind of, you know, I was thinking on these things recently when I was out at a park and watching the fish who were blissfully unaware of the fact that there were multiple fishermen around them waiting to have for dinner tonight. <laughs> anyway, um, can you be blissfully unaware like that? How far do you want to take that line of thought? Can you take more pleasure in the simple things despite the fact that we know there are entities or energies surrounding us every day in life looking to ensnare us, okay? Dark reality, but um, just something maybe to meditate on. Um, how much awareness do we want to get these things? What is a healthy level of it? Maybe what is not? And also some advice with this energy is, um, yes, Jupiter squaring Pluto, very challenging, involving power dynamics and people trying to get more power in their lives. So I think probably if you are looking for more empowerment in your life and dealing with people who are not really cooperating with that, they're not really supporting that, um, you, you again have to realign towards people who actually want to share power as opposed to take it for themselves. And it goes both ways, right? We have to do that as well. Not be so me, 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 empower me. We have to really get into these exchanges and dynamics where we're looking at, okay, how can I empower you as you're helping to empower me? Um, but really, again, who's willing to do that at this rate? Um, who can be trusted at this rate? choose wisely um, because I think that the last two years have been showing us the integrity issues on other people and within ourselves, what are our breaking points, um, also the character flaws, um, who's got the intestinal fortitude to do the right thing even when nobody else is, even when it's not easy, okay, who has the strength of character to endure adversity, um, when support systems are cracking around us and unraveling all around us, who can actually go the distance? You've been shown. And again, some of you, it's like, it's been a tough pill to swallow, okay? And maybe some people wanted to, but they just couldn't. They just don't have the tools within the shed um, to actually help you, okay, in the way that you needed or, or support you in the way that you needed. Now, again, May 19th, coming into this new moon in Taurus, um, you know, that's leading up to all of this energy. And then the following day, on the 20th, we've got Mars entering Leo. So I think that's going to help give a boost of confidence there uh, to go after what we desire, um, to really assert oneself with a lot less worry and maybe have more passion for life and going after 
our goals. Super positive, but as I said before, fixed signs most impacted by this. Um, I think overall it's going to make us, uh, you know, the synergy um, end of May, we're going to come out of this time frame more curious, more um, seeking of information, uh, making knowledge based decisions, uh, maybe communicating a lot more, opening up more, considering the people and places that are going to support our plans and really help um, make manifest of those plans rather than, you know, frustrating them further. Um, because we've already been through enough of that. I mean, all the frustrations, I think, the last year and a half have been reveal revealing the misalignments, as I said before. So um, I, I'm actually feeling that the end of May is looking a lot more positive in terms of finding alignments after a period of finding misalignments. So let's talk a little bit about the U.S. astrology around this time frame with the new moon um, and the way that it's hitting the United States um, sixth house. And I think this is really highlighting uh, what's going on with the workforce and particularly healthcare workers could really be highlighted and also military support. Um, matters having to do with um, working conditions, ethics, um, I, I've seen that coming out. A lot of people are coming out in the healthcare field. I'm hearing people say they, they, they've quit. They no longer trust the system. They don't want to be affiliated with the system. We're finding reports of people saying, you know, that essentially what happened uh, during COVID in 2020, 2021 is with the, the hospitals and doctors getting kickbacks. You had assembly line Okay, I, I really hate to say that like that, but that's what I've been seeing in the news. And it's a revealing how people uh, will abandon their ethics if paid enough. Everybody's got their price, right? Um, I think another industry may be impacted with the sixth house would be um, the restaurant industry. Um, again, medical field, big pharma, the docs, uh, doctors, um, anything involving chemicals, public servants, uh, matters concerning crops, grocery stores, animals, the cattle industry, particularly like we have been seeing a lot of loss of livestock mysteriously, um, a lot of a loss of poultry and dairy resources as well. And, um, and that's probably why the restaurant industry is getting, I think, hit here in the United States with um, the shortages and with the inflation, the food inflation and all of that. So um, people who work in these uh, industries uh, are probably going to have to rethink how do they deliver goods given the reality of what's going on with the economy. During this time, we've also got the U.S. experiencing Chiron in Aries return in the fourth house. So this is really a pain point having to do with support for families regarding housing, food, and farming. And yes, the employees are feeling quite a pinch from the inflation, and they're looking for support from others, from employers. Obviously, when we're talking about fourth house, we're talking about issues with feminine mothering energies. We've got the continued war on women. I could go on um, Neptune transiting the fourth house in Pisces. Um, this is really obscuring what's happening. Like people don't even, they don't even know. Okay. And I would argue there's, this is because of a lot of psychological warfare. That's a side note, but uh, people very still, uh, people still are very unclear and unsure as to how to heal this issue. And so I think that um, and the issue really is about the United States returning to its roots and getting grounded in the truth of it. And the truth of it is that, hey, we are rebels. Make no apology for it. It is who we are. We're a nation built upon revolutionaries, okay? Um, we were built upon the right to self-defense. We've made it this far with the Second Amendment. It's only been like in the last couple decades that we've been seeing people going rogue with this and that's a whole nother issue but um, we've been a free nation because we have all the way this entire time had the right to self-defense unlike any other which keeps a lot of governments in check okay and so um, 
there's been some pretty aggressive campaigns, even in Texas where I live, to disarm the population or to limit our ability to, to defend ourselves. Um, and so I personally feel with the energy, um, you know, it, it's really asking us to stop playing passive, um, stop playing victim, don't allow yourself to be victimized, to be martyred because you, you, you allowed for disarmament of law-abiding citizens, okay, which means that criminals are going to be the only ones who have the guns, okay? <laughs> and arguing and say, oh, the government will have it. Well, arguably, I mean, have you been paying attention the last couple of years? They're not exactly on the up and up with the law either, but I digress. Watch out for the false flags that are going on. Um, they want Texas bad. They want Texas bad. And with Jupiter and Mercury conjunct in Taurus in the United States fifth house, I think that um, people are really taking a closer look at and talking about these things in the news. All right. Um, this, these issues of population expanding, um, the migrant situation just exploding, particularly along the you know, border states, Texas. Arizona. Um, my gosh, I just recently saw that, you know, they try to, um, the people of Arizona try to put up their own little makeshift border wall. But then the Biden administration came in and said, you got to take it down. And there's a lot of controversy going on right now. Like, um, are we not at the state level able to defend our our borders. I don't know. It's it's getting super weird. Okay, very super weird. Um, and what's happening with the banks as well? That's another issue. What's happening with investments? Where'd the money go? All right. Um, what's happening with our children? I mean, these are topics. These are fifth house topics. You know, um, what's happening with this push for people to want to encourage chemical or surgical castration? Um, that is being guised as gender affirming care. Okay. Um, what's happening to women? Um, you know, women are now starting to speak out and say that, you know, the new black face is woman face. Um, and we are, as women, seeing a lot of awards and safe spaces and resources um, being given over to biological males. We are seeing special accommodations being given over to biological males. So there's been a lot of a wave of trans women, by the way, that are now entering into prisons and shelters that were previously designated for women only, thereby displacing these women or placing them at risk. And in some cases, we're seeing incidents of rape now increasing. James O'Keefe basically uh, put out a recent expose about this where they're talking about these million dollar babies where you know they've got these men who were previously straight prior to conviction and then at sentencing they declare their pronouns and that they're trans, thereby getting taken to serve time in a female prison and raping and impregnating women with an explicit purpose, an express purpose to have a million dollar baby that they, they can then get sued and they can be, win money from the state. It's a big scam. Nobody wants to talk about it. I could say so much more. I'll probably save it for another video at another time. Okay, I'm going to keep it moving. Let's talk about Eris and Aries in the fifth house as well, where people are getting pissed off about all these issues. All right, that's why you're seeing these protests going on and people are beginning to ask why. Why are grown men who are often dressed as sexualized women, why are they desiring an audience of children? Is this grooming? Because, right, if, if that was a woman doing that, it'd be like a strip club, <laughs> you know? Then I'd be like, okay, mommy's a stripper, like, you know, or you, this would never be okay for a biological woman to do this, yet it's okay for, so people are asking, you know, what happened to the take your children to work day or um, or show and tell where you, the kids, do you remember that when you're growing up, um, you know, I'm an 80s kids, Gen X, or you know, sometimes you have the parents bring, uh, or the kids bring their parents into school. And then, you know, the parent, it was like career day where, you know, 
um, Johnny's mom or dad could talk about what they do for a living and, and talk about their career and what they do when they grow up, when they, you know, as an adult. Um, what happened to that? We don't have any more. We have, we have drag shows, okay? Um, I'm sorry, is this like a Mandela effect? I mean, um, am I the only one who remembers show and tell, career day, take your kids to work? Like, what happened to this? What happened? Just <laughs> some glitch in the matrix. I don't know. I don't know. Somebody tell me in the comments down below. I want to hear it. <laughs> All right. With the North Node in Taurus in the fifth house also squaring um, the United States natal North Node in Leo uh, in its eighth house, um, we're looking at money, values, self interest. Um, those kind of things are being challenged by shared interests and things going on with the tax system, the government, okay? Uh, and again, lots of anger about this with Black Moon Lilith transiting the United States natal uh, chart, uh, natal north node in Leo in the eighth house. Uh, and, and this is probably also why we're seeing a lot of Americans engaging in negative attention seeking. I mean, is this really what you wanna be known for? Um, woman face, right, is what, what it's being called. So, um, a lot of anger, I think, is also being addressed to people who are in authority, the elite, the ruling class, the um, people in, you know, it's supposed to be a democrat society, a democratic process, um, but we, we basically have like an oligarchy here. We have politicians who regard themselves as royalty, and it, it's getting pretty ugly. People are getting really, really angry about it, especially with Capalis conjunct this North Node, okay? Um, matters of anger with people in authority is coming to a head. And again, Eighth House, this is really bringing up, okay, this is concerning matters of sexuality and use of taxpayer funds. Why are taxpayer funds um, specifically going to library schools who are affording these uh, these trans events and activities, okay? Why are they not instead hosting um, career day or, sh you know, show and tell or, you know, something like that? Um, or, you know, meet, meet your, um, gosh, I remember, I think probably in the second grade, um, we would we had the police officers come in and the fire department. So we got to meet, oh, here's what a real firefighter is and what they do and how they serve the community and how they give back. Like, why are the public schools and libraries not funding this with taxpayer dollars? Um, Mars and Cancer in the eighth house opposing Pluto, the Pluto return that's occurring in the United States second house. Well, lots of anger about the distribution of wealth through the tax system and the debt slavery that is going on and people losing a lot of net worth individually um, and watching the nation's wealth getting drained, particularly with this banking crisis that's been going on, um, that's making way for further consolidation of wealth. I think one of the good things that's coming out of this is people are starting to get familiar with the names BlackRock and Vanguard. That's becoming, those are becoming household names. And also we have more talk about CBDCs, central banking digital currencies, um, even some places like Florida saying, hey, we're promising to ban this. We're, we're not going to go along with this. Also, you know, with this energy of Mars and Cancer in the eighth house opposing the United States Pluto return in the second house, um, I think this is bringing about um, the exposure of pedo rings, okay, along with the ties to shady funding from Wow, I, I'm really opening a like, <laughs> I, I gotta watch my words on this platform. Um, it is coming out, by the way, that, um, you know, the Epstein scandal and all of that with Ghislaine Maxwell, um, it's coming out that basically he was a CIA asset. This is what, I'm not saying it's true. I'm saying that this is what is being reported in some circles. And that's why we never got to see the little black book of clients. And we maybe never will, okay? Um, they convicted Ghislaine without divulging who the clients were, okay? 
and who the victims were. It is absolutely insane what happened and why, why? Because apparently Epstein, based on the reports, is a CIA asset. And, and why would they do that? Why, why would they hire him to do such a thing um, and pay him through black budgets? Um, well, apparently, again, this is, this is the going theory, I'm not saying it is, um, is that it was to bribe and control people who are in positions of power and influence. Right, so that they would get pictures, they would get evidence, and then they own you. They can control you, uh, and if you don't do what they say, well, they'll just expose you as being a pedophile or whatever. And now we're finding out that there's a similar thread going on with Hunter Biden. Um, right, I mean, we, we've heard about the laptop from hell and all the pedophilia and sex trafficking stuff that was, and drug trafficking that was on that um, laptop, which again, people in the intelligence community deny, denied, but surprise, surprise, comes out to all be true. And now Hunter Biden is trying to evade child support in family court over his baby mama. <laughs> and um, this is getting pretty dicey because now the judge is saying, well, we may force a financial exploratory of his personal finances which would probably reveal money coming and going from Hunter Biden tied into all of this sex and drug trafficking. So um, it is, again, like Epstein 2.0, okay, where people are speculating that there will be even more links exposed um, to this ped pedo rings, okay, uh, but again, if you are watching mainstream media, do not expect to hear a thing about it. Um, and if you do hear anything about it, probably lies, okay, especially leading up to the 2024 selection, right? Because we know in the 2020 selection, the laptop from hell was suppressed and denied. And we're finding out now it was all lies. You, you have to learn. You, if you're still listening to this, please, I wish you would shoot your TV, shut it off, they're lying, okay? All right, and finally, let me wrap it up with the Saturn conjunct natal Ceres in Pisces in the third house. Continued media lies. I mean, really, it's just confirming what I said. If you don't believe me, you know, you want to take my word for it, the astrology is telling you here that, you know, we're continuing to see lying from media particularly having to do with inquiries into tax evasion, issues with the IRS, right, and they're um, coming out and saying, by the way, that they're not going after uh, low-income people, but, um, well, if they're not going after low-income people, then why are they monitoring any type of monetary uh, exchanges at $600 or more? Uh, actually, a deeper dive into the matter shows that they're the they're going to be targeting issues related to small business owners. They're going after small businesses. And it's kind of like 2020 all over again, where there was attack on small businesses through the regulations with Convid. Okay, so more of this going on. Um, it's on purpose, people. Just get ready for it. And also, you know, people waking up, by the way, to Fox, Fox News being infiltrated. I've said this for years. Fox is controlled opposition. They're owned by the same people. They're there to give you the illusion of choice when in reality, um, they're trying to control the narrative. There's things they don't want you to talk about. And we're seeing that with what happened with Tucker Carlson, who talked too much about January 6th. Talk too much about Epstein. Talk too much about Twitter files and the CIA. And talk too much about Hunter Biden and the FBI. So, you know, and, and who's Ray Epps, by the way? Who's that? You know, and all these taboo topics that nobody's allowed to talk about um, on a supposedly conservative network. Uh, they don't really care about freedom, okay? So if you're banning them, good for you. I banned them back in 2012. <laughs> Okay, so um, yeah, I mean, listen, get ready for them to pull out all the guns in their arsenal uh, with the information warfare, okay, because they cannot have too much truth leading up to the next selection, which is next year. They're already trying to control the narrative. And by the way, the rumor is, for those of you who are wondering, Tucker Carlson is probably going to end up going to Twitter, possibly Rumble. I'm super excited about that. Um, 
But okay, another issue is local polling stations. I think, you know, we're seeing that more of those are, are, are getting under investigation. Again, going back to this hitting a third house placement, Pisces, very Neptunian energy, and a lot of Saturn there conjunct, taking it to task, you know, like we've got to, I'm seeing in Houston where I'm from, I was basically raised out in Houston, um, a lot of investigations of the polling locations are going on. And then you see out in Arizona where the voting rules and regulations are being reconsidered and are being taken to task and are going under legal scrutiny with the legal system. So, um, you know, more of this, okay? And I think also uh, on a local level, we're talking third house, you know, local communities are really being taken to task right now in terms of how do they nurture connection locally given the economic pressures um, putting a crunch on people and you've got a lot of local churches and charities that are having to really sharpen the way that they go about strengthening their outreach efforts with so much homelessness going on in the streets um, yes through probably like food pantries and other relief measures like shelters um, that are getting overrun, they're getting tapped, they're getting drained of resources. Um, and you have some leaders within cities saying, hey, I mean, even in New York, you know, uh, this very pro-immigration, um, legal or not, they've been historically for it, but you're getting some very um, Democrat, even blue states are saying, you know, they're crying uncle. They're like, listen, we, we can't take this anymore. We're, we don't have the resources for this anymore. And I think that people are realizing out of all this pressure that um, the power is with the people at the local level. And, you know, our founding fathers set up this country for this purpose, okay, that, that the, the states would have authority that supersedes government authority. It was to keep the federal government in check. Um, and so, you know, to really apply that philosophy of the founding fathers to today's life, I think it would get us out of a lot of trouble where if we were buying and banking local, not global, then we the people could get ourselves out of this. Because if you think about it, we're the ones that we've been we've been funding all of this, this misuse and misdirection of resources um, has been going to globalist banks, um, globalist, you know, big pharma, big agra, big whatever. OK. Um, but if we stop this and we start voting with our daughters more consciously, okay, um, then we will starve these entities out like BlackRock, Vanguard. Um, and I think that the more people start embracing the idea that activism is a lifestyle, it's not just about protesting or positioning. It's about taking your money out of these global banks and putting them into local, small local, or, you know, stop buying the cheap, big pharma, big agra, and go alternative, go natural, go do your farmer's market, do a community garden, things like that. Um, we return the resources to the local instead of having it leave our areas, okay? Um, I think the key in us getting our power back is refusing to comply and refusing also to consent with things that are not in the best interest of our nation and of our states and our communities, okay? And we gotta go back to our roots, um, the way that the Founding Fathers set this up um, of local control, local power, power to the people at the local level. So, um, but you gotta realize that so many people in our country have been indoctrinated in the public fool system to be ashamed of the founding fathers to regard them as oppressors slave owners whatever fill in the blank we have to stop being ashamed of our roots as a country um, and we have to start walking in our own authority and protecting our own interests and our own autonomy and our right to autonomy and our own authority okay that's our roots we've got to return to it all right, real quick, I am going to wrap it up by saying sneak peek into the full moon in Sagittarius on June 3rd. This is a time when we need to let go of limiting beliefs and, you know, maybe become your own guru, right? Again, it goes back to stepping into your own authority and autonomy, um, no longer deferring um, your belief in others, right? Start believing more in yourself, okay? Um, and I think with the Sun and Gemini during this time, it's really putting a spotlight on the facts that are at odds with some beliefs that maybe we've held in the past that no longer ring true. 
um, or the beliefs of people that you highly esteemed in the past. Um, these gurus, these religious authorities, whatever kind of people in authority that you revered. Time to maybe say, ah, you know, um, this doesn't hold water, therefore I'm not going to be carrying the water for this anymore, okay? There's been and will continue to be increased awareness of the need to know more, to learn more, and to communicate um, more about it. And I think that around this time of the beginning of June, okay, um, communications and even commuting may be more highlighted. It's a lot of mental energy around that time pushing us to think more about the bigger picture and thinking about it through a new lens, given new information. And, you know, also finding some healthy balance between a conflict that exists between logic and using intuition or following our faith, maybe blind faith. So that's all I've got for now. Hope that blesses y'all. Till next time, take care.